Heaven is in. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Unity of London. And welcome to any of our guests. I know that Beulah's granddaughter is here from Toronto. We're so happy to see you. And it's so good to be back. I was at Unity Village for the Licensed Unity Teacher Retreat. It was wonderful. And, but I thought about all of you. It was serene and blessed. And there was a Nehemiah group starting on the Sunday that I was leaving. To me, that was a sign. So it's just something for us to consider. Nehemiah in our future. A chance for us to be at Unity Village together again. Also this afternoon at 2 o'clock, there will be a Sunday service culminating the Unity of Canada Conference, which has been running since Friday of this past week. And we'll finish this afternoon at 2. If you go online, and Wendy will tell you the exact link, <laughs> I think it's Unity Canada. Dot org, you will see the service coming out of Vancouver. And you might be thinking, well, I'm already at a service. Well, <laughs> is there any problem going to a second one? Out of Vancouver. And it's, again, as I said, it's the culmination of their conference. So they're bringing all their exuberance, their love, their energy. So please consider attending. It's number three. Oh, it's link number three. So when you go to unitycanada.org, you'll see link number three. So you press on that. Or if there's anyone you know who wasn't able to be here, you might want to pass that on. Our welcome home sign always reminds us of the positive energies that we need to demonstrate that we have within our souls, the love, the joy, the kindness, the curiosity to keep on growing. No matter what age we are, we can always grow. And we know that. And growing is part of living. Self-expressing is our capacity to be open, to be honest, to be sincere. And as we are that way, Others will respond in kind. Unity is a positive path to spiritual living. And I invite you to join with me as we share our five basic principles. God is all good and active in everything, everywhere. I am naturally good because God's divinity is within me and in everyone. I create my experience by what I choose to think and what I feel and believe. Through affirmative prayer and meditation, I connect with God and bring out the good in my life. I do my best by living the truth I know. I make a difference. And if you're sitting on this side and you're sort of bending that way, that's why I've moved over here. When we practice being the change ourselves, we inspire others to make a change. And being the change is not always easy. There are little road bumps along the way, and we figure out how to step over them or walk around them, always with faith in our hearts, knowing that there will always be a loving, positive hand stretched out to help. And we coexist. We have wondrous opportunities. And I, I'm going to ask Janet to just reach into that purple bag and come up and just hold something up. Uh, th this was a little shirt that I saw at the bookstore at Unity Village, and I thought about Scott because he had presented. And you'll see the message on it. I don't know if you can see it from where you are. A nice, loud voice. What does it say?
Yes. <laughs> so I had seen a few of the members wearing them and the whole idea that we are inclusive, we are diversive. We come from all backgrounds, all ages, all nationalities, and together we do make a difference. And we can stretch out to members of our community. Today I'll be in the prayer chapel, in the prayer chapel. <laughs> I'm thinking Unity Village. I'll, I'll be in the little room where we pray. It's like a little wee chapel. and uh, Or in here if anybody wants to pray following the service. And Wilda will be online as always. And here's a Karen Drucker song that I chose because of Wendy's message today. Those are without a doubt the simplest, most memorable lyrics we've ever had. Four words. Four significant words. If you are facing any challenges right now, and I had a big one on Friday afternoon with Zoom, we can allow and surrender. And just saying those words and maybe swaying back and forth as you say them. I allow, I surrender. You'll see our prayer chest before you, and the prayer chest is your opportunity to hold in your heart the wholeness and well-being of people you love or yourself. You could put your name on the little paper, put it into the prayer, ch prayer chest. And we claim and assert and affirm all that we wish to be true. All that we can affirm realistically and practically, even if it is in this moment right now, I allow. In this moment right now, I surrender. 
my worry, my anxiety, my fear. All right, off to count on Peggy to move the monitor, please. We now move into prayer. I invite you to close your eyes if that feels comfortable. And I'll share a prayer that I was, I was asked to create a prayer and share it at the beginning of the Unity Conference. So I will share what I shared then. James Dill Freeman wrote a poem called, If Thoughts Had Wings. In that poem, he asked this question, would thoughts of truth not find a rainbow's radiant form and would not peace of mind be sunlight after storm. Today for us in 2024, we face challenges at home and far away. We celebrate the power of joy-filled prayer, affirming our joy, affirming our power to lift our spirits from despair, to strengthen our hearts with healthy care, to delight in love-filled laughter, to reawaken weary souls to nurturing divine presence, to let love flow forth in streams of cleansing power. We hold in prayer all of our beloved Unity of London members, all those in Florida and nearby southern states, who have faced such devastation that their hearts and their souls be revitalized with divine inner strength. And for all those who rescue, who care, and who comfort, we hold in prayer. We say, Amen. It's a pleasure for me to welcome our platform assistant for today, We'll be careful not to step in the cords. Maybe that's what I did, mucked up the remote. <laughs> Nancy Youngson, who will be introducing our guest speaker and sharing the daily word. Loving. The boundless love of God expresses through me, I am loving. To be loving means to be kind, understanding and generous. It means forgiving grievances easily and seeking to understand myself and others. In striving to be loving towards others, I begin with myself, exercising self-compassion when I make a mistake makes forgiving others easier. Taking time for self-care makes it more natural for me to be a nurturing presence for others Treating myself well helps make my, my generosity spontaneous and frequent. Love is the very nature of God. I am a spiritual being, which means love is my nature too. Through my loving nature, I am positive, optimistic, hopeful, and faith-filled. I am the heart and hands of God on earth. I am loving. From 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 and 7, love is patient, love is kind, it bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Wendy's back, <laughs> and there's going to be no... <laughs> So Wendy joined Unity Movement in 1984 and received her licensed Unity teacher status in 2000. Best known for teaching history of Unity and Bible courses across Canada, she also serves on teams at the national and international levels. She's honored to be back at Unity. Must be she was here early today, real early. <laughs> Anyways, with her talk, Forgiveness Part 2, and, you know, let's not be weighted down by stones, um, we please help me welcome Wendy. Mm -hmm. 
There we go. Now you can hear me. Much better. Ah, yeah. Last time I was here, it took me 20 minutes to get from Vets Parkway to Highbury because they squished all three lanes down to the shoulder because they were paving. And this morning I, I got to Vets and I sort of looked ahead and I said, it doesn't look too bad. I'm going to just keep going. And I got, I got here before Pauline which I think is is got to be a historical event, you know. So for those of you who uh, weren't here, back on the last Sunday of last month, um, we discussed, and this is, this is a really condensed version of this book, um, The Art of Forgiving, the, the Book of Forgiving. The Art of Forgiving is another book. The Book of Forgiving. As I said last time, it draws on Bishop Tutu and his daughter's experiences with the truth and reconciliation in South Africa. And let's face it, Canada has a lot of parallels with that whole structure of having large forgiveness work to do. So let me just do a quick review. And you're, if you weren't here and you're going, why are we all holding stones? That's because that's why I love this book is we do our forgiveness work with a stone rather than writing, rather than meditating. You can meditate with a stone, but you can also, that one of the, the homeworks from last time was to spend a morning with your stone in your non-dominant hand while you did stuff. I confess, I had to go back to mousing with my right hand because I just could not mouse with my left with the stone in there, it just didn't work. But it reminded me, as the exercise suggested, of am I willing to let go of this? You know, because sometimes those things that we need to forgive, we might not want to because it's part of who we are. It's part of our life experience. And the, the difference here is that we're letting go of the emotion. We're letting go of whatever no longer serves us, kind of like you know, taking the chaff from the wheat and going and making the flour to make all those good, yummy things that put pounds on us, right? But being able to let go of that. And I don't like to say it's hard, but I will say it can be challenging. As I believe I said last time, but I'm going to say it again, there are some times when I think I have forgiven a situation, I have forgiven a person, I have forgiven a whatever, and then this metaphysical dust bunny pops up, and it's like, wait, where were, where did you come from? I I did I did the forgiveness work. What are you doing here? And realizing that I had stuffed the emotions down, I had stuffed everything down so tightly that it took energy to bring it back up. So let me just review. Okay. I think I may mean at the computer. Could, could you put it forward, please? Thank you. So one of the things that the tutus have is the idea of the revenge cycle. And the revenge cycle, and you can just click through this one, please, Peggy, is when we're in a space of hurt, harm, or loss, which has caused us pain. We can choose to heal, which is a whole other pathway. We're going to talk about that. Or we can choose to harm. We can choose to lash out. We can reject our shared humanity. We can be totally in the mindset that there is no way God or the Christ or, or any spirituality is in that person because they're just so nasty. Guilty of that one. I hate to say it, but guilty of that one. So we get into revenge, retaliation, payback, because that's one of the things we've learned is that that's how we respond. And then we can get into violence and cruelty. And guess what that leads us to? That leads us to harm, hurt, and loss. And then it just goes in a circle. And I'm not saying the circle's wrong, necessarily. I just prefer to do something that doesn't continue this revenge cycle. So let's take a look at what the choosing to heal path looks like. And interestingly, it is a path. So we choose to heal. 
that has to be a conscious decision. This idea that I'm willing to go through whatever it takes to make me feel better. Whatever it takes to heal the relationships I have. Knowing a few things. It might hurt. It might annoy people. And I'm laughing because I, I remember someone once saying to me, how can you forgive her? It's like, um, because not forgiving her is harming me and I'm preferring to take a different path. So in the book, we have our stone. And this week, we're going to tell the story. This is our next step. We're going to speak the truth as you understand it. Anyone else ever done an experiment or been part of an experiment where you say, what just happened? Now, I'm going to pick on a couple of you. So Janet's sitting over here and Nancy's sitting over here. And I'll bet you that when we were going through the five principles, you were each seeing it slightly differently because this was in the way or Pauline was in the way or, you know, or Amber, who's farther back, might not have been able to see the bottom two lines because everybody in front of her was in the way. And that's not to condemn, criticize, just to say what is. But it's a situation where we all see it differently. I worked in the court system for 12 years. Evidence and listening to witnesses is one of the most incredible things because I remember a few cases where we'd go on a break and the judge would say to me as I was escorting them back to their chambers, were they at the same place? Did they see the same thing? Because it was so different. So as you understand the truth of what happened, we might have gaps in our memory. We might have just phased out for a moment because it was just so traumatic. We might have other people around us who say, well, that's not how it happened. This is how it happened. And this is, this is really what happened. You're wrong. The key is to speak what is true for you, to speak your truth. So start with the facts. Tell your story first to a friend, a loved one, or a trusted person. Someone who is capable of listening without interrupting who can hold that space for you to be a safe receiver of your story, who will handle it preciously with love and compassion. This is where it gets a little difficult because there are differing arguments in restorative justice about whether or not you need to speak to the person directly or you can do it indirectly without any actual contact. And to that, I say, follow your guidance about what is safest for you. Someone who harmed me, if I ran into her just out of the blue, I'd be okay with that. But I have decided that for my own well-being, I am not seeking out to renew the relationship with her. So consider telling the story to that person if it's appropriate. You know, if it's your spouse, you might want to have that conversation. It'll be a difficult one, I can imagine, but um, that might be a useful investment in your relationship. Or write a letter. I've, I've always loved writing letters that I don't post. And I either burn them and bury the ashes or I put them in my prayer box or whatever. But just to get it out of you, just having that tangible experience of telling that story. And the biggest part of this is accepting that whatever happened cannot be changed or undone. I'm sorry to say Doctor Who is fiction. There is no TARDIS that we can use to go back in time and change things. And Star Trek understood that because they had the prime directive about not doing time travel even though they did, but be that as it may. Now, what if you're on the receiving end? What if someone comes to you and says, 
I need to speak my truth and tell you my story. Some suggestions. And I will send slides to Pauline and she can make sure that you all get them so you're not having to write down everything. How to acknowledge the harm. Listen. Truly listen. Not the listening where you're trying to think of, oh, did I do that? Did it, did it? What am I going to say to them? Oh, my goodness, how is this going to affect our relationship? No. Silence. Active listening. Do not try to fix the pain. Not your job. Do not try to minimize the loss. Also not your job. Do not offer advice. One of the things that came up in our, one of our sessions yesterday at the conference was the idea of you don't know what the other person needs. Even when you're sitting in front of someone in the prayer room and you've had a discussion about what they want to pray about, you don't know exactly what they need. And I would submit sometimes we don't know what we need either. Do not respond with your own loss or grief. Don't tell, you know, oh, yeah, I understand that. You know, when that happened to me, it never happens exactly the same way. Of most importance is to keep confidentiality. It doesn't go any farther. And the way I do that is whatever I've been told, I put it in my prayer box and I burn my prayer box the entries in my prayer box at regular intervals. But just so that I have acknowledged it, it's in the prayer box, and I haven't, you know, broken that confidence. Offer your love and your caring and empathize and offer support. All right, so usually we do a talk and then we meditate, but we're going to do them together. So everybody got your, sta your stone? Okay, I just want you to practice talking to your stone. You don't have to name it. If you want to name it, that's fine. But just, hey, stone, I'd like to tell you a story. Here's what happened as I remember it. One of the things that I love about speaking to the stone is it's a useful tool for me for if I'm dealing with something with someone who's passed on or is no longer physically in my life. Or, as I said, the person that, you know, I've pretty much done my forgiveness worth, but I don't want to reopen the relationship. So I can, I can say, hey, stone, got to tell you about that thing that happened at the courthouse. And this is what happened, and this is how I remember it. And the best part is, you know that the stone's not going to talk back to you. They're not going to laugh. They're not going to yawn. The stone is just there. So then we move into our next step. If you, we can have... The, uh, the next slide, please. I think we get a, do we get a next step, Peggy, or do we go straight to the next slide? I've forgotten. Ah, there we are. Thank you. Naming the hurt. <sighs> this is the hard part for me, is naming the feelings. Um, at Sick Kids Hospital in Toronto, at their website, they have pages of lists of words. So they have grief words. They have words around healing. I found the words around the list of grief words really useful for when I just felt blah and people would say, but tell me how you're feeling. I can't, I, I can't help you with blah. Does it, are you hungry? Are you sad? Are you, what are you? So identify the feelings we're getting in from the sterile facts of the matter into the heart of the matter. So remember, no feeling is wrong, bad, or invalid. <clears throat> With all due respect to my extended family, 
my feelings were not accepted, particularly things like crying or being angry. I, that may be unique to my family. I don't know. Um, I'm seeing a couple of smiles. So maybe there were some other folks that, you know, children are supposed to be quiet and sit over there and play while the adults do whatever the adults are doing. And you can't have a tamper tantrum because you're not supposed to. So that pops up for me every so often when I feel a really deep feeling. There's that child in me that says, wait a minute, not feeling comfortable. You know, just because I got L-U-T after my name doesn't mean I'm perfect at this. Okay, you're along for the journey with me. So recognize the stages of grief, however you recognize them, and honor wherever you fall in the process and understanding that grief is not a straight line. It does wiggles. It goes back on itself. It, it does all sorts of things. Um, and you may think you've completed your work. And as I just said earlier, you know, something pops up that you've, you've overlooked or it's been forgotten. So find someone who will acknowledge you and listen to your feelings without trying to fix them. <clears throat> now that may be a professional counselor. And please hear me that there is nothing wrong with being on a spiritual path and using a professional counselor. A number of the ministers in unity who I greatly respect regularly have a process of meeting with a counselor or therapist to ensure their own mental well-being so that they can better you know, be there for their own uh, membership. Accept your own vulnerability. Move forward when you are ready. I want to read that last statement again. Move forward when you are ready. Not when society says you should be ready, but when that voice within says, okay, what's my next best step? I think I'm ready. And that is so important because, as I just said, grief can go forwards and backwards. You think you've got it all sorted out. Something else triggers you and you find yourself going, wait, wait, I thought I thought I dealt, I thought I dealt with. Okay, I need to regroup. Look at it again. Talk to my stone again. Talk to someone who I have confidence in. And then I can take that next step when I'm ready. And the next step when you're ready. All right, take your stone in your dominant hand, which feels funny to me because I've been carrying it in my non-dominant hand. All right. So quietly because nobody needs to know, but just name a hurt you are feeling. And as you name it, I want you to clench your hand as tightly as you are able to. Okay, clenching it tightly. Betrayal. Open your hand and as you release, release the hurt. Use that physical, tangible experience as a way to say, yes, I have released it. And continue this until you're finished releasing that hurt. Next slide, please. Okay, I will send that. And then we go up to our third step, which is granting forgiveness. Recognizing our shared humanity. Moving back into the oneness that unity teaches. It's hard to say we're in oneness when you're mad at someone and you're holding them at arm's length. Forgiveness is a choice. Now, as a child, it wasn't in my church of origin. It was something you had to do. And if you didn't, if it didn't result the way you wanted to, it meant that you'd done it wrong. I don't know if anybody else had that experience, but that, that kind of traumatized me. Had some interesting metaphysical dust bunnies around that one. We grow through our forgiving, and that is how we move from victim to hero in our story. 
And we know we are healing when we are able to tell a new story. So the story I would have told about my time at the, at the courthouse would have been betrayal. How somebody did something behind my back that really messed up my, my work experience. My new story is, thank you that you did that because it was a toxic job. I really didn't want to be there. I didn't see any way out. And through her actions, I was forced out. And I'm doing what I love now. Very different story. All right, our next slide, please. So when you're finished with this, you can take your stone and wash it. Dip your stone in the water three times and with each time say, I forgive you. I forgive this. Whatever it is you have told your stone is going to be released metaphorically and cleansed. I love this. Can you tell I love this book and I love this process? Because I struggled for so many years with journaling and journaling didn't work for me. But there are a bunch of little stones in my garden that represent each time I've done this book with a group. Our next slide, please. So we have renewing or releasing the relationship. So generally speaking, and, and this is true of restorative justice, the preference is always to renew unless there is a question of safety. You know, friends of mine who foster children know that the preference is to bring them back with their siblings, their birth parents, whatever. But it's not always the best choice for the child. So too for us. That when we do our forgiveness work, if the person is still on this plane of human existence, it may be that it's not appropriate to renew the relationship. So ask yourself, what do you need from the perpetrator? And those are the, the tutu's words in order to renew or release the relationship. Examples, you might need an apology, an explanation, a tangible object, or never see that person again. And remember to look at your role, your part in any conflict. When you renew a relationship, it is stronger for what you have been through, but it is always different. By renewing or releasing a relationship, you free yourself from victimhood and trauma. So that's if the forgiveness is needed from someone else. If you, someone comes to you needing your to uh, discuss you as the perpetrator, gather support as needed. This, you know, I, I love Jesus's line about when two or three are gathered. I love the idea of the three, that one is the observer, the one is holding the space. Admit the wrong. Bear witness to whatever anguish you have, your actions have caused and apologize. Ask for forgiveness and make amends or whatever restitution or reparation is called for or needed. And above all else, honor your victim's choice to renew or release the relationship. It may be that they say, okay, thanks for saying that. Thanks for listening to me. Bye. I don't ever want to see you again. And being okay with that can be challenging. And finally, forgiving yourself. We become imprisoned in the past when we do not forgive ourselves for past mistakes. If you have not sought forgiveness from a victim, Forgiving yourself for those actions will be easier after you have sought forgiveness from your victim. And we do not heal in isolation. It feels like a very private, very solitary journey, but it, the connection is what helps us develop compassion for others and for ourselves. And then we have uh, some more steps here. And as I said, I'll, I'll send the, the slides to uh, Pauline. So you can look at them. So we decide whether or not, now that we're complete with this journey, whether we're going to renew our stone or we're going to release the stone. 
if you've chosen to renew the stone, decide if you're going to paint it, decorate it, leave it as it is, where you might want to put it in your home or in your garden. If you've chosen to release your stone, if you picked it up in a particular place, you can put it back where it came from. I personally put mine in my garden um, because I like the reminder that I have done forgiveness work before. And so no matter how hard it feels, I know I've done it before so I can do it again, right? Nothing is wasted. Everything, even a stone has its purpose. And we Oh, okay, I don't know what I did, but now it's working. <laughs> I forgave the... the uh, anyway. So in a world of forgiveness, we take care of each other. We cultivate forgiveness. We transform suffering and how we create a world of forgiveness. One stone at a time. And I'd like to close with a poem from the book. Here is my book of forgiving. The pages are well-worn. Here are the places I struggled. Here are the places I passed through with ease. Here is my book of forgiving. Some of its pages are tear-stained and torn. Some are decorated with joy and laughter. Some of its pages are written with hope. Some are etched with despair. This is my book of forgiving. This book is full of stories and secrets. It tells how I finally broke free from being defined by injury and chose to become a creator again, offering forgiveness, accepting that I am forgiven, creating a world of peace. And so it is, and so it shall be. Thank you. Thanks so much, Wendy, for, for bringing us a message that relates to everyday life. Who among us has not found the need to forgive? And whether we're forgiving those who've passed on or those around us or forgiving ourselves, you, you bring brought to us something both practical and spiritually uplifting. Thanks so much for sharing. In the silence I can feel the love In the silence I can rise above In the silence I can hear the voice In the silence I am home In the silence I can feel Silence, I can rise above. In the silence, I can hear the voice. In the silence, I am home. In the silence, I can feel. In the silence I can rise above In the silence I can hear the voice In the silence I am home I am home I
It almost feels as though we should stay in the silence for a few moments. Here at Unity, we have so much to be grateful for. I just look around at the people who are here today. All of you bring your energy. Uh, you're sharing your time. So it is a chance for you to donate financially. But we are very grateful to you for whatever you bring, whatever you give on Sunday and throughout the week. I'm grateful to Renee and Kate who walk around doing the collections. And we share in our blessing, divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Love that message. I'm loving Peggy for taking care of us back there. <laughs> our special announcements today, we have a few. And the first one is, there we go. October is our membership month. And it, I'm kind of overdue for doing a pizza and principles. So if anybody is in the room right now and you are interested in becoming a member, please see me. And I will arrange for a pizza and principles or veggie and values. Uh, in the meantime, if you've not had a chance to put your initials on the membership form back there, please do that. October is our membership month. And I, I will try and figure out a way to move this lectern because I always feel sorry for the people on this side. Um, if I have notes, which I usually have on the lectern, it's hard for you to see it. We have that fabulous November 15th dinner dance coming up. Yay! And a chance to just share fun and laughter. It's a fundraiser, but it, mostly it's a chance just to get together and lift up our heels, maybe do some dancing, do some singing, and get your hippie on. If you have hippie clothes and or even if you don't, they're really easy to kind of contrive. The dinner dance includes a silent auction. And if you are clearing out your basement as we have been doing at home, then you can bring all kinds of small items, decorative items, uh, meals, uh, the services that you are willing to provide to someone else. So you can say, Yes, I will cut your lawn or I will pick up all your debris in the lawn for a silent um, fee. And then you just donate that money to Silent Unity. Or the person who wants your service puts their name on the card and whoever gets your service first pays the fee. You know how it works. Uh, musical services, cutting hair, cleaning homes, maybe just being a comfort to someone. And contact Lorraine for information. Lorraine will be back next Sunday, so she is traveling. And whoops. this sounds so exciting, Everly Brothers tribute. Who remembers the Everly Brothers? Yay! <laughs> And that's coming up October 23rd, as well as the young ones. And Jim does this every Wednesday night. He, he hosts it. And they're wonderful concerts from 8 to 9.30. Nancy's nodding. Nancy is all, often out. I know Dorothy's often there. Sometimes Dawn's here. I'm here in and out, depending on what my other scheduled activities are. But there, it's fun. It's a chance to just relax, and it's only $10. 
That's a bargain. You cannot get that anywhere. And before we go to I Am the Light, I have an announcement. It's about the booklets in the back. Do you remember I mentioned that the last time I was here? How people, how you, you members of Unity, can think of people in your community who might need to feel worthy. Now, th this is for the LGBTQ community, but it could be anybody who's not feeling very good about themselves. So I've put a few booklets in the back. If you know anybody within that community who would appreciate receiving the booklet, please take one, meet with that person one-on-one, -on -one, say this is some one of our beliefs at Unity of London, at Unity all over. And with it, one of our little cards. The card is Be My Guest at Unity, gives our address, and on the back, it's James Dillett Freeman's prayer. This is also available back there in Espanol. And so if you have friends who are Spanish speaking, it's available in Spanish. The Healing Thoughts booklet. If you know anybody who need who you feel is they're on shaky grounds whether it's physical or emotional, and they might benefit from that little booklet. Or maybe you visit a, a group. Maybe you're part of a group. And that's also an Espanol, and it's back there. And there are a couple of these little breathe. It's just a little wee booklet. It doesn't say breathe on every single one. Everyone has a different message. It's just the... Uh, method of going through prayer, breathe, relax, let go. So these are available if you know somebody who would like to receive that. <laughs> and now, the light of God surrounds me. I am the light. The love of God enfolds me. I am the love. The power of God protects me. I am the power. The presence of God watches over me. I am the presence. Wherever I am, God is, and all is well. Yay, God. And now our peace song, where we just gather and hold hands, if that feels okay for you. Now is your chance to uh, share any message you might have for Wendy about her awesome presentation or, or any message if you want to share something else.